Hey everyone. Today we're going to build some shelving, some heavy duty shelving. I've come to the conclusion that if I don't get shelving up, I'm never really going to get all the stuff in this warehouse uh, or my workshop here put away. So I looked online on Marketplace and Craigslist to see what I could find out there that was used and it was just very expensive. And I went to Lowe's and I looked at what they sold and I looked online for what I could buy commercially. And also, it was very expensive and not particularly what I wanted. So I figured I had a lot of wood left over from the paneling job in the workshop, including some sheets of uh, plywood. I, I did, when I bought the half inch sheets for the walls, I bought three, three quarter inch sheets with the idea of making a workbench. And uh, I then found on Marketplace some incredible deals on workbenches, so I picked those up uh, and I was end, ended up with uh, some spare plywood. So uh, let's see what we've got to work with and then um, I'll formulate a plan and uh, let's get busy. All right, so I've got three sheets of four by eight plywood, one of which I've been kind of using as a default cover for this workbench which I bought this workbench on Marketplace. It came with a chop saw and a table saw for $100. I just had to pick it up and wrestle it in here by myself. Um, but really a great deal, really a great deal. Um, I won't really be following this construction technique because even though I'd love to, I, I need it to be heavier duty. So what I'm going to be using is these four by fours and in modern lumber, that means it's not four, it's probably three and a half. Yeah, it's three and a half. So these are square three and a halves. So I've also got all these one by fours and two by fours left over. Um, hopefully I have enough two by fours. As I said, I don't think I have much use for the one by fours. I do have a bunch of um, uh, half inch paneling plywood that I could use for the top shelf, but for the, I'm gonna make it uh, three shelves. And so for that, for the two bottom shelves anyway, I'll be using the three quarter. All right. So the first thing is um, from what I've been thinking is I've got to cut a three and a half by three and a half cut out in each of the corners so that the beams will come up. And uh, I gotta figure out how to do this. I'm building something that's going to probably outweigh me by at least a factor of two. And I've gotta somehow get it into this corner. So I've gotta build it in a way that I'll be able to work on it. Cause even these uh, four by fours, they're eight feet. They're quite heavy, quite heavy. I would, I would guess that the four of those probably weigh as much as I do. All right, so let's get started. I figure I'll, I'll cut the uh, slots in the bottom shelf first, and then I will start working on the two by fours. If you're like me when you're doing these jobs, you lose your pencil all the time. So uh, I had found this in the large toolbox haul video. Uh, when I did the video, I found it and I've kept it because for this, it's really great. So we're just gonna mark off our three and a half points. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, point five, right here. Okay, looks small, but that cutout should be big enough for the beam. So I'm gonna put one of these on all four corners and then we're gonna cut that slot out. I'll be right back. So it's funny, I, I just did the other one and this, this method actually works really well using this saw first and then just trimming it with the sawzall.
if you do this for a living, you're probably going to leave a comment, probably a negative one, but, um, you know, for the first time in my life that I have to actually build something like this, it works. All right, one platform done. Uh, I'm gonna put the other platform up here and do the same thing, and then we'll be back. But this method worked out just fine. All right, two bottom shelves are covered. The third shelf that goes on top, I don't need to cover these, or cut these rather, because it'll just sit on top of the posts. All right. Um, Let's look at, well, I guess next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two by fours to go right here. They'll connect to the four by fours. And then I'll cut two by fours also to go on this edge here. So the two by four, the four by fours will go here, two by fours, two by fours. And the good thing about this is that um, I can actually cut a whole set of these. So it's two long ones, two short ones, and <clears throat> I can cut two long ones for all three shelves. So I need six of these and six of these. And then, other than the cross beams, I've got all my main pieces. One of the cool features of this workbench is this. There's a chop saw under here. To be honest, I haven't tested it. But it's an old craftsman. I have a feeling it works. this first cut before I cut any more of them. I'm gonna get this one perfect and then I'm gonna use this as my model. Nice blade, the switch is goofy, but the blade's nice. All right, I'll take this over there. I've got a nicer um, Craftsman miter saw that I bought in the 90s within my garage. And I may replace this with it because uh, this one's a little wonky and it's also small. As long as my other one will fit right in. So I am just over, just there. So I'm gonna trim just a little bit off and then we'll see how well it fits on the other ones. This switch is weak. <laughs> I'm not gonna be doing this all day. But the switch saw them on a trigger. That unlocked it. All right, I dug my old 1990s Craftsman miter saw out of the garage. And uh, it looks like I may be able to insert it in this thing. Eventually, if I can't get the other one fixed, I hate to throw things away, so I'll probably try to fix the switch on the other guy. And um, so what I'm doing is I've got, here's my sample. 
So I'm using that as a template. It'll make it go a lot faster and um, it kind of also ensures that they're all the same length. This is a really, really warped board. It's amazing this thing. Um, I bought it at the Sears, I believe in, um, not Worcester, but right next to it. So possibly Auburn, Massachusetts in 1997 to work on my first house. And um, I can't tell you how much work it's actually put in, a lot. And it still runs fine. I don't know who made them for Craftsman. But whoever it was, kudos, you did a great job. It's been trouble free for 27 years. Uh, also, so it's important to note that always use the same sample. So you see, these are cut pretty close. But you always want to kind of keep the same sample. Whereas I'm making uh, two, four, six of these, I want to always start with the same board. All right, all six of the long boards are cut. So we're just going to repeat the process and get our measurements. So this guy is probably an equally strained measurement. This is 41 and a quarter. All right, I'm sure. The same on both ends. It is. So let's cut. <clears throat> one and a quarter here. Again, I'm making it just a little bit over, just to be sure. I'm gonna check it. Shave just a hair off this, and we'll be right where we need to be. So I'm going to build this here. Decking screws. These should work fine. They are self tapping, so I should not need to uh, 
Look how easy that's going to be. These guys are all in. You just gotta do two cross beams. Looks like I have exactly the right amount of uh, two by four for this. here. So I'm going to cut six of these. Okay, this is roughly 90 inches across. So I'm going to put these at 30. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. And then I'll be able to put a couple right in. It's already heavy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some 45s like this and put them in. Especially, uh, hopefully I have enough to do it across to make it a little bit shorter. Yeah, that's about right. That looks about right. Um, two, four. So instead of six, I'm going to need eight of these but they'll add a lot of strength to it.
This adds a lot of strength to it, but it's also adding even more weight. All right, now I'm going to mark where these edges are. Flip it over, I should be able to put a couple of screws in the top. This is going to be heavy. Oh, it's getting heavier. At least these pieces don't get heavier than this. And if I miss, it's no big deal, but. I shouldn't mess this one. Nope. I got it. Easy as that. I'm going to do the straights, a couple on the straights, the two crossbars, which are at 30. Those are real easy to find. I'm going to do these. And then this, the bottom level is done. I remembered that I had these toolbox casters. I think they're rated at 3,600 pounds, but I don't remember. Regardless, I am going to give it a shot. Uh, worst that can happen is the casters fail. Let's back it up a bit. I don't have a lot of room here. Bottom shelf. essentially how that's going to work. So I'm going to wait until I get the second shelf built before I screw anything together. Oh God. Yeah, that's essentially how it's going to all come together. three feet, I guess, up for this. So I put about 43 inches in between there.
43. So I've decided to put um, board on the inside. So I'm gonna use one of those um, one by fours that I've got. I'm just gonna put it right here at 43 inches on both sides. a little bit of extra support rather than just relying on the screws but it also helps me to make sure that everything's even I think my bit is getting a bit worn out Okay, so the third shelf, we don't necessarily have to build it ahead of time. But what I do want to do is put some of the boards in place. So I'll have some support. So we'll screw these in and then we can screw the long pieces in. And then it becomes a matter of how much support we want to build for the top shelf. But let me screw those in, I'll be back. I just got to put a couple screws in here to hold this. I took a break, charged my phone a bit so I can film it. Here's where we're at. We're about ready to stand this thing up. There is no way I could ever lift this. So what I'm going to do is lift it in increments. So it's gonna be a process standing this thing up. Do a little bit of it at a time. Up, one under. That's how we're going to do it. I'm going to just keep going. I got to find more things to prop it up, but I'm just going to keep lifting it until I get it high enough that I can swing it over. Hey everyone, just a brief interruption here. If you're enjoying this content and you'd like to support my channel, and especially if you like cats, I've written a series of chapter books for ages eight and up, fully illustrated, called Flea Biscuit and Friends. The first book in the series is Flea Biscuit Finds a Home, followed by Flea Biscuit Summer Vacation, and finally, Flea Biscuit's Magic Christmas. 
They're available at all local booksellers as well as on Amazon.com. I will post a link in the video description. And hey, that's my pitch. Back to the video. See how well it moves. Oh, geez. So I still have to put the top piece on and secure that. Uh, but look at this. So the casters are mostly just so I can get this thing in place. But that's amazing how well that goes. I'm going to call it a night. It is almost 11 p.m. I'm pretty beat. Probably been at this for 12 hours. Give or take the breaks I took. Um, but these are in. These extra supports. I decided to put some extra since I had a bunch of these pieces around anyway that I was actually just going to throw in the fire. That's not in all the way. I don't know what's up with that. Getting tired, I guess. But I put these on just because I had them and I have extra bolts and everything, but it's pretty secure and it is now ready for the top sheet, which I'm just too tired to try to lug a three quarter inch sheet of plywood up there right now. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up and I'll be back at it to finish this up tomorrow. All right, it's the next day and uh, I'm gonna do the last steps, which are putting these on and the top. So what these are for is that adds a lot of strength. So to make these, you can just take your miter saw from zero and put it at 45, which is a little tough to get into with this guy. I guess it's all full of sawdust. Um, and then take our template piece I'm finding it somewhat easier to kind of start these screws here. And then <clears throat> just One in. Seven more to go. Oh, 
All right, all the corner pieces are in. So um, this is all I have left of two by fours. And this wasn't even from that set. I actually had this piece uh, left over from another project from a long time ago. And it had obviously been used for something It had cuts in it, but um, this piece split because it had cuts in it. Couldn't use that. Uh, so that's it. I got like maybe four feet not even three feet left of two by fours to build this. I ended up putting these little pieces in the corners because I had them left over from cutting these. All right, next step is actually getting uh, a sheet of plywood on the top for the top shelf. And uh, I think I'm not gonna use the three quarter inch sheet. I don't really see a reason for it. It's pretty strong up there. So I'm just gonna put a half inch sheet up there. It's lighter, it's easier to get up there. And uh, it's obviously a less expensive piece, which leaves me a full three quarter sheet. rest of these in and then we'll be back everything's in place all I need to do now is clear out that corner clear out the rest of that plywood and uh, roll this thing in it's massive I'm really grateful I had those casters because I don't think I could have moved this thing without them Hopefully they'll hold. But what I think I'll do when I put it in place is, is lift it and put it on blocks so that uh, there's not all that pressure on the wheels. There's a lot of weight on those wheels now. And once I load all this stuff on, it's gonna be crazy. I've got the corner cleared out. Take the brakes off. See if we can get this thing in there. As a last step, I'm cutting up these one by fours. I don't really have much wood left over to do this, so I'm using these. I'm cutting them up to make essentially a base so that the unit isn't sitting on its wheels.
I have just enough screws left and plenty of 1x4s left to do this. All right, that's it. I figured you'd enjoy seeing it all loaded up. So about 14 hours of my time, and if you went to a lumber store, probably $300, and you could build it yourself. I did it myself, I'm sure you can handle it. All you need is some basic tools and some time. Um, I like this project so much that I think I'm gonna build a workbench version of it to go right here beside it. Be a little bit of a different design, but mostly the same principles. So hey, if you enjoyed this content or you liked some of the content you've seen on my channel previously and you haven't subscribed, please do. Those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. It helps me and it helps the channel grow. And hey, as I always say, if you'd like to do something like this, a few hundred dollars, 14 hours of your time, all you got to do is go out, get busy. Take care.